How many recognize the fact that 98% of the people who trade lose money? Everybody. Now, if that is the case, and those are the facts, it would stand to reason that those people are doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> window or the dashboard with the lion hand in the uh, upper left hand corner that looks exactly like the main uh, uh, main window of the software with just one uh, one additional module it's called the simulator uh, I have it opened over here and I also have some data already uh, queued up so that we can jump into trading. What the purpose of the simulator is, is to really demonstrate and illustrate how the software opens trades, how it uh, manages those trades and how it closes the trades, how it targets the profit, uh, the profits that we, uh, that we designate or specify at the beginning of trades and uh, basically how it repeats these cycles over and over and over and over until you decide that you no longer want to trade and, and then basically you, you stop it. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, open several windows here and I'll make comments as, uh, as, I, as I do that. Uh, first of all, I'll open the uh, harvester window and I'll put the I'll take the simulator to my to my other screen for now so it uh, doesn't confuse us. Uh, so what what we have in the harvester is har har the harvester is basically the uh, the engine of the software. The harvester the bottom part of the harvester down here in this uh, in this uh, window. Uh, is populated by the various different mathematical algorithms that actually cause the uh, uh, the software to open trades and the algorithms uh, are to a degree uh, very simple it's just pluses and minuses and you add up the pluses subtract the minuses and you you get the results and when the conditions are when the conditions that have been prescribed to each and every algorithm to each and every harvester as we call it uh, are uh, uh, when the, when the conditions are, are are there, then the software will uh, uh, or the conditions are present, the the software will open trades and then it will manage those trades. And what we have in this strategy, I call it a hybrid strategy because uh, uh, it really is a combination of a of a trending strategy as well as a as a range bound strategy. So we should uh, we should be getting pretty good results uh, with this. And I developed the strategy fairly fairly recently. Uh, and uh, uh, this this was based on the uh, uh, lack of volatility in the market that we uh, that we uh, had for the last uh, three four months or so. Now we have seen in the last two weeks the market is starting to uh, move a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of folks that are uh, getting the uh, getting the uh, uh, monkey off their back, if you will, with the uh, uh, close, all, uh, close all deals uh, functions uh, taking place. Uh, in fact, several people uh, had sent me uh, messages that they had their close all deals and, and this was uh, probably, uh, probably the largest, uh, 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 largest period where a lot of people uh, were waiting for our close all deals and, and that was uh, obviously due to the uh, lack of vol uh, volatility and we discussed this several times. Uh, already while you know when you had me on the uh, on the on the call and uh, so anyway I, I developed that stra this strategy uh, by by trying to not uh, I'll guess the market but just uh, just go with the numbers the strategy is also based on purely price action there is uh, there is no consideration whatsoever given to uh, any technical indicators any macroeconomic uh, uh, indicators or analysis. Uh, we don't care what the central banks do because ultimately everything is reflected in the price uh, of uh, of the market, and the market will 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 uh, reflect that. So so anyway, we've got uh, getting back to the strategy. We've got a strategy that consists of uh, 20 harvesters. It is all on one pair pound yen because uh, it, it's uh, when it moves, it moves good. It's it's a good one to trade. Uh, one of my favorite, if uh, if if not the favorite one. Uh, 
this is a strategy uh, built on uh, on a ten thousand dollar ten thousand dollar account. We have the uh, uh, data queued up here starting uh, January uh, January first, and we will pretend it is January first, and we will pass the data as it happened uh, in the market uh, through the through the software. Uh, through the simulator and we will see how the software would have been opening and closing trades and managing those trades and, and reaching the different profits. Now Bobby also, uh, uh, in, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, there will be folks that will have questions throughout this presentation so if, uh, if uh, they want to write them to you, you want to and you want to uh, just pick the uh, pick uh, pick the uh, ones that you feel need to be addressed or should be addressed, or the first ones that come in. Then I'd be happy to uh, to uh, answer those. If I Excellent. don't have to, if I don't have a chance to answer all of them, maybe save them. We'll address them address those uh, those next week. So so here we are with the harvester. We set up the uh, we set up the strategy. It is a uh, purely uh, price action driven strategy based on certain price movement in the market the harvesters will open trades when the market reverses the the, mar the software will also reverse from uh, from long to uh, uh, from long to uh, uh, short or from short to long depending and uh, depending on which direction the market is going we also each and every trade that will be open is uh, um, is protected with uh, what we call our zone uh, recovery trading uh, trading uh, uh, strategy and and that's set up right in this window over here it is a two-legged trade uh, trade recovery based on a 150 pip wide zone uh, needing 150 pip move to uh, uh, close the uh, the bad trade zone recovery is not a strategy that we used to make money with it, it is a defensive strategy when the market goes against us and we have to be protected at, at all times we don't use stop losses uh, some people may want to do that I recommend against them uh, but that's a topic of another uh, discussion uh, I guess so our strategy is ready <clears throat> what we will do we will open our closed deals window and this is where all the trades that have been that have been placed and closed uh, will be placed and we will see uh, how much money we're making or losing down here at the uh, at the summary bar at the bottom uh, then we will also open the open deals window and we'll put that up here and the open deals window will list and will have all the trades that are currently open and are being managed by the software as you notice up in here in the um, upper right hand corner we have CAD total total running which is a function this is the mother of all functions uh, the the most superior function of all functions in the software and that is our uh, global profit target because it uh, it is found in the global uh, open deals window uh, that lists absolutely each and every trade that the software uh, software uh, opened and we're going to be targeting 100 pips which is 1% of, of the account and uh, every time we do that this, the uh, trading process will start again and the software will open more trades, uh, new trades and, and then manage, manage those as well. So we've got our uh, open deals and closed deals window open. We'll be able to see in a, uh, in a time lapse type situation uh, how the software is uh, is working. So so basically, we're looking at the mechanics mechanics of the software. Also, I'll open the working orders, and in this window, you will see all the orders that are pending. In other words, the ones that have not been uh, have not been open yet. Uh, when the software decides to cancel those orders, they will disappear from this window, and and new orders will. Uh, Joseph. Uh, Yes. Real quickly, uh, a quick question from the field here. Uh, they would like to know what the profit target for this particular strategy is that you're working the, on. Yeah, the profit target is 100 pips, or or uh, give or take one percent of the uh, account size of the of of the total account. So what what the idea is that if if we can reach the one percent at least once a week times 52 weeks, we've got 52. 
52% a year. Now, the, depending on how the market cooperates or how the market, whether the market is volatile or not, we might uh, we might have the close all deals more often, uh, or we might not have it as often. But that we we cannot change that. We we have to go with what the market gives us. So this is based on a the the profit cycle. Uh, or the profit target is 100, um, 100 pips, which is approximately 1% of, uh, of the account, and we'll be adding that 1% with every uh, close trading sequence. Okay. Thank you so much, Joseph. Thank you. All right. So we're, uh, everybody's ready. We'll bring, we'll bring over here the, uh, the uh, 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 simulator, and the simulator will actually show four lines that will be coming across this gray gray box over here uh, and I will be making comments as the uh, as the market as 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 the market uh, runs uh, I will be making uh, comments as to what happens we'll have at the very bottom this line that already started I have the data paused right now uh, uh, this is the uh, the direction of the market in other words uh, if the market goes uh, down this line will be going down. If the market's going up, it will show that the market is going up. Now, what you want to pay attention to is the uh, uh, current quote uh, day and time. We're starting on January 1st, 2013, right at around uh, right right before midnight, and uh, uh, obviously there's not a whole lot of uh, volatility on the first day of the year. Obviously, New Year's. Uh, uh, but as the market gets more volatility, we'll we'll see this uh, line go up and down uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty radically. Now on top, you will see three other squiggly lines: a green one, red one, and uh, uh, the blue one. And these are the actual equity curves uh, of of our profit. So we'll we'll show how our profit grows, and when we go into a drawdown, how uh, the uh, uh, specifically the yellow I'm sorry yellow uh, specifically the red line will be uh, going below the uh, zero line etc but the, I'll I'll make comments when when that happens so let's just go ahead uh, the, the green line will be the uh, the summary of all closed deals the red line will be the summary of all open deals and guess what the blue line will be that will be a summary of both of both lines put together okay so uh, it, it's basically your liquidation value of the account at, at, at any given moment if you wanted to close the open trades. Now, all we need to do is start the trading, press start. Right here, all harvesters are running, and they are waiting for the market to move. So let's run the market. There we go. And for the, I'll move. The, the harvesters are running. We will need that. We'll put this uh, this in here, and obviously you see the little bit of movement in the market over here. Uh, we've uh, so far don't don't really have any closed uh, closed deals on the uh, forex mm. That that's the way we look at the market. But what you notice that the harvesters have placed several several orders, and these orders are pending execution when the market reaches the uh, price points at which uh, uh, they are expecting to be uh, placed at, then the software, obviously, then the trades will be executed and, and a trade will be open. As you can tell over here in the, uh, uh, on the left-hand side in the uh, uh, open deals window, we have trades that are being managed that have already been opened. We just experienced a, uh, the first uh, global close basically we with all the little trades now uh, understand we are trading a ten thousand dollar account but our base trade our base position is 0 0.5 mini lots so that's five micro lots that's a five thousand dollar position you probably need about uh, uh, eighty dollars or so to to uh, open that trade in in terms of margin uh, now we just had a close uh, and uh, a global close all deals, meaning that the position that were opened uh, reached a total aggregate profit of 100 pips, give or take. The the, uh, uh, the the close all deals is a market command, and depending on the broker, the volatility of the market, there might be a little bit of slippage here and there. 
but the bottom line uh, it, it is it's going to be pretty close so what you see we've so far we're uh, 113 pips in profit in our closed deals right now we're about minus 49 pips in our open in our open trades and uh, this is the next trading cycle the software had placed a total of 14 trades uh, we see the summary of the long position and the short positions we're uh, currently uh, net short about 0. Uh, about 0. 0.9 uh, minis and the market is moving you see over here the three lines as I mentioned you see the market went up a little bit then down then up quite a bit then it was kind of flat and flat so so that's why right here the equity curve on both the open closed and and the combined uh, trades are, uh, you know, are are kind of flat market is not doing a whole lot uh, we can speed it up a little bit but I if, uh, in the beginning I just want you to kind of get the feel for this now over here on the very uh, very uh, uh, right hand side we have a total of maximum drawdown uh, the the simulator will calculate from the uh, from the highest position uh, uh, how much uh, uh, we went into a a temporary loss at any given any, any given moment and and you will see that uh, as the red line gets painted uh, together with uh, together with the uh, blue line over here as well, uh, we've got our uh, current uh, uh, closed deals, which is 113. That corresponds with this number over here in the closed deals window. We have our uh, float, which is uh, the open uh, positions, and those are right over here. And uh, that number is the same as this number over here. It's just uh, a little difficult to watch it uh, both at the same time. And this is this is our summary, and uh, this is our total uh, total low, lowest uh, uh, equity that that we have achieved uh, since the beginning of trading. So now what I will do, I will speed this up a little bit. I'll disable the drawing because then it will it will go a little faster. And uh, you will see that the uh, orders will be changed uh, as, as the market moves here a little bit. Right here we have another close all deals because we were we were net short the market went down so we closed all deals now next cycle uh, software opens trades we have another close all deals and as you see the equity uh, line which is the most important one is the green one and the blue one uh, are are going up meaning that we're making money so far we're about 327 pips uh, uh, to the good uh, in the open deals, we're right now 80 minus 37. You, you see, this is changing very, very fast. We are also notice on the fourth day of uh, of trading. So far, we've uh, we've gone through four days. So this, the, you, you can you can see how this happens very, very, very quickly. Uh, any questions? I'd be happy to answer at this time. Joseph, we really have not had any questions come in. I think we're everyone is really grasping a, a better understanding, and certainly the visuals are just amazing, and it really does assist with the entire process. So you can go ahead and just continue moving forward at this time. All right. So what uh, you you see down here that we had a little bit of a bigger drawdown, 747 pips. If I if I look at the uh, uh, the uh, 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 lines here, the equity the equity curve, we see that from about here to there. To here, uh, uh, we we were in a bit of a drawdown, and that is, if you if you look below, look at the market, you can tell that the market was kind of choppy. It went first at the beginning of this cycle, the market was going up, then it went down, then it tried to go up again, but it was flat. Then it was a little more flat, slightly going down, and then it went down, down, down until and it. 
basically it doesn't matter where the market goes we just need enough time if the if the market moves that's a good thing for us whether it moves up or down it doesn't really matter if it's flat well it's flat you can't you can't really push it or pull it there's nothing you and I can do but when the market moves doesn't matter in which direction the software will add to the position and the direction of the market and then it even if it is in the opposite position if the market reverses without reaching close all deals and as the market reverses the software will be adding more positions in the uh, more trades in the direction of the market that's why if you if you notice in the uh, in the working orders over here there's a lot of lot of trades to be filled a lot of orders to be filled however if the market re, uh, reverses even these orders will be changed to accommodate the new uh, accommodate for the new direction in the market right so uh, let's just uh, let's just uh, speed this up a little bit and uh, we're on the 10th day of uh, January, uh, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon now. Uh, and we're about uh, 150, I'm, I'm sorry, well, it's moving, but you, you guys can see it. Boom, close all deals again. We're up uh, roughly about 579 uh, pips. Uh, and boom, we had another one, 682 pips. Now, this, uh, I'm, I'm saying in the, uh, in the harvester here that this is a, this is a moderate strategy. Well, it's a moderate strategy for me. Uh, for uh, beginners, this uh, uh, this strategy is aggressive as hell. It is an extremely aggressive strategy, particularly if you don't know what uh, what you might be uh, getting into. Uh, it it is recommended that when you first start, you start with a conservative or at uh, at best uh, uh, or at worst rather whichever way you want to look at it, uh, the, uh, the conservative strategy, don't get this aggressive because this aggressive uh, strategy can really get into uh, drawdowns that uh, uh, might, might panic you a little bit. And uh, uh, so far, the only, people, the only people lose with the software that, that don't have the patience and uh, hang on uh, till the end of the trading sequence, as as we are seeing currently uh, with the uh, with the flat market that we've experienced over the last the last few months. Some people just don't have the patience. Jay. Yes. Oh, I was going to say we do have a couple of questions, but finish your thought, please. All right. Well, uh, some some people just don't have the patience, and and trading is not for people that are not patient. Uh, it, it is it is a long term process. The, the most successful investors have uh, accumulated wealth not overnight, but over a, a, a period of years, if not decades, of consistent successful trading and investing, and and that's that's what we're we're after. So let's okay. let's finish uh, drawing the uh, drawing the uh, equity curve. So as you can as you can tell, we're looking at a fairly choppy market. But at the end of the at the end of the trading cycle, the software always accomplishes what it set out to accomplish, and that is to close on this profit that that we designate uh, at the beginning of the. Uh, of of the setup, and uh, we've got uh, we've got times of uh, drawdowns, and you can see that with these valleys of both uh, on the uh, uh, on the uh, uh, blue line, which is our uh, combined equity curve, and also the red line, which is the open deals equity uh, curve. So we we had we had some drawdowns, but at the end of each cycle, as you can as you can tell, the software closes, and that's where the money comes. Uh, uh, come comes comes back home. I, uh, okay, so that's what I wanted to mention. All right, Bobby, shoot. Just a, a simple question, Joseph, but uh, very uh, in, very important is what defines moderate, aggressive, or conservative strategies? Uh, moderate, uh, conservative, or aggressive is determined on what the drawdown maximum drawdown expectancy is on on that strategy. Uh, and the expectancy of a drawdown is defined by a variable that we call a trade interval. Uh, as, as you can tell, when we start a trading sequence, we start with one trade, and even I, I could slow this. I could really, really slow this down, and you can you could see the one trade, and then the next trade, and so on. Uh, so the the bottom line is the more aggressive a strategy the more trades will be placed but the more trades you place the the greater 
uh, the possibility that those trades will or can go against you and the more trades go against you the more trade recovery you have to uh, you have to go into and therefore you're going to be using a whole lot more margin as well as the possibility of a, of a drawdown will be uh, will be increased now on the positive side when the when the market cooperates uh, you are more likely to achieve close all deals or profit target uh, profit targets a uh, lot lot quicker because if the if the market runs in a in in one direction and and these uh, FX markets do have a tendency to trend when the market trends then the software adds on to the position uh, in the direction of the uh, of the prevailing trend so it reaches the profit market faster uh, however in choppy markets uh, that that could be uh, that that could be somewhat somewhat risky. Um, excellent explanation, Joseph. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Stephen, for asking that question. By the way, Mr. Nemeth, are you planning on adding more currency pairs to the hybrid strategy? And can we change which pairs to trade with ourselves within the strategy? Uh, well, that's that was two questions. It was. Uh, so I'm just throwing them both out there. All right. All right. This the strategy can be applied to any uh, any pair, of course. Uh, however, one has to be mindful of the volatility of the pair. So, in other words, euro dollar. If the uh, euro dollar moves an average of uh, 45 to 50 pips, as it has been uh, lately on a on a daily basis, I I would not even would not even think about trading it because uh, it it doesn't move if it doesn't move there's no 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 potential to 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 make <laughs> money right so i i look for pairs that have the the highest volatility now some people will say and well that's so terrible because it can go against you yeah it can go against me sure but i i have mechanic mechanics in place uh that will that that will prevent me from uh, from a catastrophic event. Number one and number two, I trade in both directions. I, I I don't really care if it goes against the original trade. As you can tell in the open in the open deals window, we've got uh, we've got ten trades that are long and uh, almost twenty trades that are that are short. And these are little tiny trades. So we go into the market just kind of one toe at a time. Uh, we start with one trade, and then depending on what the market does, we add to it or we subtract to it, uh, and 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 basically we create these trading sequences that are all mathematical, uh, nothing more than really mathematical algorithms trying to trying to uh, uh, combine the profits and the losses from the various directions, from various trades and various directions, until we finally get our aggregate profit. And really, if, if for a human to do this uh, manually, it it would be quite impossible. Now, okay. so so any any pairs can be used. Uh, can an individual uh, change uh, from a pair to pair? Was that the uh, was that, that the other was question? the second half of the question? Yes, Joseph, correct. Well, you can add to a pair already trading. You can add to that strategy, but again, what you have to be mindful of is is your capital in your account. If you're going to add another strategy with another pair doing the same thing, then you should probably add more capital to your account or wait until the existing trading sequence uh, is closed, then stop trading altogether and 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 request for a new strategy or a, or a different pair. But you know what what, what I do I I test, uh, I test the various strategies uh, before they go out there, and I would only feel comfortable uh, uh, giving people opportun an opportunity to trade with those pairs and those strategies that I know work. Excellent, excellent. 
Thank you so much, Joseph, and thank you for asking that question. Uh, Joseph, this is a, um, a great question, I think. Um, people have, uh, I, the question is, I've heard, him, heard Joseph use the word global close and close all deals. Are they the same thing? Uh, they are yes and not necessarily. Uh, <laughs> there, are, there are different ways to close a trade. There's probably about eight uh, in this uh, in this strategy, about eight different variations of closing a trail, uh, closing a trade. Uh, but when we're referring to close all close all deals, global close all deals, that means that all trades that are open, all trades, every single one is closed, and we start with a clean slate from 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 basically square one all over again. Now that's global close, CAD global, close all deals global. There could be other close all deals that are not necessarily uh, that are not necessarily global. For example, each and every harvester, and now I'm bringing the har harvester window back here. Each and every harvester assigns trades to what we call an open deals window. An open deals window, if you can imagine a filing cabinet with a bunch of drawers, right? So, and we have, imagine a filing cabinet with 10 drawers, and you can place trades in each one of those drawers, and they are numbered from 1 to 10. So, for example, as you can tell, this strategy is placing trades in open deals window number 1. This harvester does the same thing. It just so happens that all of these trades go into uh, open deals window number 1. And I will show you what that open deals window number 1 looks like. Uh, open deals window, it's over here. I brought it over. So uh, you have open deals window number one up here in the uh, upper uh, left hand corner, and you see the trades that have populated uh, this open deals window. And this open deals window also has a close all deals. But if you have trades in other open deals windows, uh, for example, number two, three, four, etc., and this CAD close all deals function, function uh, kicks in. It will not. It will not be a global close all deals. It will only apply to the specific uh, uh, individual open deals window. And generally speaking, there is a very strong relationship between the trades that are located in in one window uh, or another. Joseph, here's another, uh, I think, very important question. There's a, uh, a gentleman, uh, John, here, is asking, uh, he, he has a, a strategy running right now, and he wants to know when, when, he, when is the best time for him to not to close that and then to start running a new strategy. Is there a specific time that works better than others? Uh, when the close all deals uh, function kicks in and closes his deals and he starts with a clean slate because you don't really want to compete with an existing trading sequencing. Okay, it, very there, good. And is there a, is there a, a how, how does he go about making sure that that happens because he might not be awake when there's a close all deals. What would uh, the process be with customer service? Uh, well, he would just uh, he would just send a short email saying this is who I am. Uh, uh, I would like to change from strategy to strategy. Uh, please, please make it happen, and we will make it happen. So, so what happens is he sends this email to customer support and the account monitors. When a close all deal happens, will will well, disconnect upon, his account, and then at that point, no, we'll it, it put will the not disconnect. Up? It will not disconnect his account. We cannot disconnect his account. It's his account. But what, what the strategy will do, it will we will we will trigger a function, an event that will stop trading, stop opening new trades, and stop uh, stop starting new trading sequences uh, when that function is in. So we will just Excellent. add that one event in, and it will upon. The next close all deals, it will stop trading at which time it will give us an opportunity to update a strategy or to replace it or to add to it or uh, uh, do whatever needs to be done. 
Uh, Joseph, uh, again, thank you. That was a great answer. Uh, next question. Um, right now, for someone who is just getting started with us, and, and really they're not a trader, and but, but they really want to jump in, is there a specific strategy that the company is recommending for them to use over any other strategy, or is there just a specific for the newbies that are joining? How is that working right now? Uh, well, we recommend based on the current market conditions that we've experienced, uh, we recommend this type of a strategy, this type of a uh, price action driven uh, hybrid strategy that deals both with trending markets and flat markets. Let's, let's go back and look at our equity curve, okay? Joseph, what, what account, is, is this the, the hybrid account that we're looking at right now, or is this account yeah, this, number two? Th this is the hybrid on steroids. Excellent, thank you. All, all right, so on steroids, we, uh, <laughs> very good. Uh, right, because it, 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 can go, it can draw down. So anyway, if you, if you look at the equity curve, every time you see this valley down, this valley down here, this, this, this valley, this one, this one, these are all drawdowns. And when the market, when... Uh, when the market finally gives us the opportunity to close all, all trades, that's when the uh, blue line meets with the green line, right? That's basically, this is to close all deals here. There were a few close all deals over here, close all deals over here, then close all deals over here, close all deals here, here, and, and, and so on. So these these valleys can be deeper the, the more aggressive the strategy is, right? So if you if you compare it to the market, okay, right here the market was kind of going up, down, up, down a little bit. We were closing trades. Then it, it the market got a little choppy over here. Then it went in one direction until we were able to roll over to the other side. We were in a drawdown, but then we finally did roll over to the other side and mathematic, mathematically, mathematically, we won the battle here. So we closed all deals right here. Then the market started kind of going down at first and, and then going up and there there's some peaks and valleys here a little bit if you uh, uh, if you look closer and then the market starts going up well that gives us the opportunity to again change from the short position to the long position go along with the market and we close all deals again and then we had a little bit of a choppy choppy situation over here that's where we had the biggest drawdown which was 1112 pips uh, that's 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 right that's right here that was that was this situation over here then we had a bit of a drawdown over here because we're started we started the sequence on with the market going up then it was flat on top then it reversed on us then it was kind of flat in this area over here so you you see the we're 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 just kind of jumping around trying to figure out what the market is gonna gonna do but we don't have a crystal ball right so we only have to go with the uh, with the market but the bottom line at the end of each trading sequence we will we will close the uh, uh, close the sequence with the profit and it doesn't matter whether the market the markets going down over here we close the markets going up we close we might be the market wants to fake us out and we might be in a drawdown but we work with mathematics, the purest science known to man. We don't pay any attention to the BS uh, indicators out there and the macroeconomic uh, uh, indicators or experts on CNBC who don't know uh, don't know any more than the biggest novice that comes to to and, and it picks up a copy of uh, a forex that and wants to trade and doesn't even know what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. And the hybrid account, Joseph, again, is account number eight, correct? Uh, well, eight is a range bound. The hybrid is a combination of five and eight. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, Joseph, here's another question that uh, I think everyone will have get some benefit from. There's um, uh, a, a few people that haven't had global closes in, in a couple of months here. And apparently, uh, on a webinar with Craig this past week, uh, there was something mentioned that you were going through the accounts to determine whether to add a second strategy to expedite a global close. Uh, is that true? And if so, how's that going? Uh, well, it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> Any, so. anybody, anybody that would want uh, want us to. Uh, 
uh, take a closer look at their uh, that account and uh, make a determination whether that's necessary or not. Uh, send send an email to support and and uh, uh, the support will take it take it from there. But uh, you ident please identify yourself who you are because uh, we obviously need to know uh, which which license it is that uh, we will be adjusting. Excellent. Uh, Joseph, with that, I think we're going to just go ahead uh, and let you go ahead and finish up here. Um, I think we've pretty much uh, answered the questions that have come into this point in time. Alrighty. So we're going to speed this up here. As you can tell, we're uh, right here on the 28th day of uh, January, still, uh, still trading. We've got some open trades, about uh, 460, uh, about 500 uh, pips now in a drawdown and hopefully we'll be able to uh, trade out of this just like we trade out of uh, pretty much everything else. I'll speed this up. We've got uh, uh, the sequence. We're in the middle of a sequence. Uh, these are pending orders, open trades, closed trades. Let's see what, let's see what happens, how this is going to break out. There we go. And with that, I'll pause it. And uh, this should pretty much uh, give everybody at least a bit of an idea of the mechanics uh, uh, and the inner workings of the software. Uh, basically, once once it goes, it, it goes. And uh, it, it really only uses mathematics and pluses and minuses. It doesn't pay attention to anything else. It is it is uh, uh, pretty sophisticated though because you as as if you were trying to do this manually uh, it's it's quite all, all, almost impossible I, I guess anything is possible but for uh, for an individual to manage at any given time 50 trades uh, that the software can be managing it, it would be it would be overwhelming so let the let the software do it. Just uh, plug it in, walk away, come back, look at it a week later or two weeks later, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll be you'll be happy with what you see. And uh, I guess uh, if uh, if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I don't know how much time we've got left, maybe uh, maybe five ten minutes. But uh, uh, this this would conclude my uh, conclude my demonstration, and. Uh, uh, Hopefully, I was able to clear uh, some of the some of the fog that is on the minds of uh, a few people, especially the especially the new folks coming in. Absolutely, Joseph. Uh, this was a wonderful presentation this evening, and certainly uh, the 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 explanations are just exquisite. And I know that it has helped everyone that is on this webinar tonight. So, thank you for taking your time to be here, and we know how valuable your time is. So, there are no additional questions at this time. I do want to uh, just again thank everyone for taking time to be here with us. This webinar will be held every Wednesday. So with that said, I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday for another version of the architect of the Forex that Mr. Joseph Nemeth. Thank you all so much again. God bless and good fortune. Thank you, Bobby. Good night, everyone.